Okay, so let's recap from last week. What were you supposed to be doing from last week? Um, instead of focusing on the learning part of it, which not to not do the learning part, but just to focus more on like the doing. Okay. And so I have set up my office. I have my computer, I have a desk, I have my printer, I have, you know, like office stuff. Very good. Um, and the other thing that I did was I came up with a company name. And the reason I, I know that you said that I shouldn't like really be focusing on that so much, but I think that it is important because I feel like it almost like, well, for me anyway, I feel like it like makes it real. Okay. So, um, so I came up with a company name. I submitted the LLC application. Nice. Um, I went and got a PO box. Um, I looked into headshots. So I have to schedule headshots. I looked into getting a company bank account, but I can't get a bank account yet until I get the company name because I need an EIN. Okay. And an articles of incorporation. Yep. Um, did you I'm, do that yourself or did you go through an attorney on that? Myself. Okay. Um, my, uh, I'll need an email. I want to get a phone because I want to have an 803 area code. Okay. And the big thing is, is that I emailed Frankie. Yep. And he put me in touch with people that I could get everything sorted out. And so I spoke to the girl yesterday, who's the education manager at the LLR. Uh -huh. And she said that my profile or like my account, whatever it's called, is still pending, um, waiting for my fingerprint card. Okay. So she asked if I had a confirmation number, which I sent to her confirming mm -hmm. that I did submit payment for that. And so I think, which I haven't heard back from her but I think she is looking into that. I emailed her yesterday and asked if like, are you going to look into that or should I contact the place directly? And I haven't heard back from her yet. So okay. well, that's great. And did you drop Frankie's name when uh, you, you spoke to her? I told her that um, I told her, well, Frankie gave me a name of this girl, Ashley. I think her last name is Jeff Coat. Okay. I think she, I'm almost wondering if she used to work with Frankie. That, that name's very familiar. Okay. Yeah. So I told the education manager, I said Ashley from Real Estate School of Success. Okay. So. That, that's great. You, you, you had a heck of a week, it sounds like. That's really good. Yeah. I'm really excited. I was actually, this week, I was actually going to say, let's focus on the LLC aspect. Uh, you're already moving ahead on that. The headshot, that's great company bank account. So, I mean, all this stuff, I know you kept bringing it up. So I was actually going to have that to knock it out. Um, as far as the videos you saw last week, I remember we broke it up half videos and then half uh, to do, and you've been doing the action, which I'm proud of. Yeah. Tell me again about uh, who you were watching and what ahas you had from that. So, um, the videos that I was watching were not, which I know you told me to watch some about um, like live calls, mm -hmm. live internet calls, which I, I saw, I am now following Ricky Carruth on Instagram. Yep. And so I watch his live calls a lot. I have okay. not watched Adam Bailey's live calls yet. So I'm going to get to that. That's going to be on, that's on my list to do, but um some of the people that I found last week, which I thought were really great, especially for agents starting out, was um, Ken, Kevin Ward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kevin Ward. Some of his videos are like three mistakes new agents make, seven things to know as a new agent, yeah. how to survive COVID, um, how to get your first deal fast. I thought those were really, really great videos for an agent first starting out because the, he talks about things that someone would never know, mm -hmm. never done it before. Right. 
And if you talk, if you have like a mentor or if you talk to seasoned agents, they'll tell you all of this stuff. Like, I wish I had done this differently or what. And that's this actually, if I remember right, that was what you're actually supposed to search for is uh, if I was a real estate agent, what would I have done differently or, you know, something along that line. Yeah, uh, because that's what you want to do is learn from people ahead of you, but not if you just keep talking with the people who are brand new, y'all are going to keep talking about what most people do, which 90% of people make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's really good. I'm glad you did Kevin Ward as well. Ricky yep. is very good. Uh, he probably is more both of our styles. Uh, mm -hmm. I definitely say though, try and find Adam Bailey as far as his internet league calls, just because uh, while he's a little more uh, direct, uh, I, I really think highly of the guy and I'm probably gonna use him, you know, so meaning if I give you leads, we'll follow his format more because mm -hmm. his format's basically, I'm with the customer care, I'm a customer care manager since you registered to our website, we can now do X for you. And basically it's a customer service approach and it's really good, but it's kind of like we want to be on the same page on what's being discussed. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you, you also uh, did some Kelly Wheeler, if I remember right. Yes. And he's tremendous. He's it, with all uh, the tools EXP has to offer. He's one of the best at being able to show you what that is. He is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The one that I watched that was like most unbelievable to me was, well, there were two, but the first one was KV core lead generation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think his, his um, YouTube account is real estate marketing ninja. Yep. So if people want to search that and it was from a video from April 16th, 2019 okay. it he goes step by step he literally tells you step by step how to secure leads how to and conversion how to convert the lead to a sale what to focus on it's just he just it was just such great information and also he was talking about um this thing called my plus leads, which helps you find out instead of like, I am pretty sure if I understood it correctly, if you focus on like um, FISBOs and expireds, you don't always have all of their information. So instead of having to take like piecemeal and then go to the tax records, this thing called my plus leads.com mm -hmm. gives you all of it gives you everything. I, I didn't really even know about that one either. That Zoom call we were on was one of the best trainings I've had, period. Yeah. Um, and so basically that's on my list. Those three tools, I'm going to get them all. Um, mm -hmm. And what we may want to do is either we could both get it or I could start off getting it and maybe come up with a game plan. I still mm -hmm. want to get you kind of on that direct approach where you don't try to learn everything before you get started. Yeah. We kind of niche you and, and keep growing. Yeah. One thing that Kelly talked about and also that other Kevin Ward, mm -hmm. um, they said, which I didn't know and I wouldn't know, um, they said to focus on FISBOs and expireds mm -hmm. and sellers yep. because sellers are way more motivated than buyers. Buyers sometimes can be like, nah, 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 like dancing around, but sellers know they want to sell. And then also another thing that I thought was super important that they both touched on was to secure both, to secure the sale and to secure the buy, yeah. both sides of it. So like, if you make a deal with them, like, you know, I'll cut my commission in half on the selling side, if I can have the exclusive on the buy side. Yeah. So try to like, you know, work with them and, mm -hmm try to try to get both right yeah yeah we're, we can you hear me frozen. i think it yeah we're frozen here for a second let's give it one second to see what happens can you hear me at all hmm. can you hear me 
I can hear you. So okay. Okay. Yeah. So that that's real estate. Every trainer is going to tell you always go after the sellers, it, and it's true. It's a lot more leverage time. Uh, instead of having to get in your car, go show houses, the buyer agent does the majority of the work in the transaction. So um, uh, you can handle, you could probably handle 20 listings compared to four buyers. And if you have four buyers, it's going to be tough. So got it. Uh, depending on, you know, how often they want to see houses, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, you know, of course, the tough thing is, and I'm all for going after the first sale by owners and expired. But that's what every agent is supposed to goes after as well. Mm -hmm. So that's where uh, you just have to know you're going to be in competition. Mm -hmm. and that's where eventually we're going to get you into what's called unique selling propositions, where you have something special about it. Almost every realtor goes with the exact same service out of the box. So uh, that's where we just want to really focus in on, okay, what can you do that someone else may not do? such as what they just said. Hey, uh, are you going to be buying a house after you sell? Okay, well, mm -hmm. I can reduce the commission, you know, by 50% on the sell side if, uh, you know, we agree to work together on the buy side. Um, and right. there's a guy named Clarence Graham, which we'll tie you in with eventually. He's an icon agent. I brought that up to him. And like for him, he's a believer in never do it. Never, don't reduce the commission on the sell side give them the buyer credit on the buy side because there's people out there who will say, okay, I'll use you. And then all of a sudden after, you know, they close on their house, they could disappear. So they didn't really fulfill their agreement. Right. But if you give them a credit on the buy side, then it, it, say, it equals out at, in the end of the day. So. Right. Yeah. That's smart. That is smart. But yeah, we have some unbelievable people that, you know, we'll be tying you in with. So yeah. as far as you for this week, uh, meaning pretty much until next, uh, maybe we'll put, what, what, is there certain days that work best for you as far as doing Zooms? No, just at nine o'clock okay. is best any mornings. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give thought to if we should sw switch it from Thursdays. Uh, maybe we just try to do Thursday again next week. Okay. But from your standpoint right now, what do you think you want to be focused on and you should be focused on this week? Um, what I think I should be focused on this week is preparing myself more for the exam. Okay. Um, I also want to research more and register for, um, since I can't like do real estate yet, um, um, w, WOSB, Women Owned Small Business. Oh, okay. So I could register with them okay. with the, at the state um, no, because you that you may want to hold off until are you going to do that after you get the articles of incorporation and all those items yeah i just want to just be prepared like if i need any other things okay i just want to be able to just like do it once i get the articles just send everything okay yeah i would definitely i would put the wosb a little bit on the back burner for maybe mm -hmm. in two weeks or something after the llc stuff's figured out just because if you go and try and you know, that they may ask questions you don't know, and then it was a waste of time where you could just address right. it in a week and a half or two weeks. So the thing about the LLC is that I, I, when we spoke last, you said that it probably would be a good idea to wait until the new year to open the LLC, which I agree with. So there was a part on the application where it asked if you want to open the LLC immediately or if you want to delay it. And so I delayed it until the start of the new year, January 4th, 2021. Okay. And the, yeah, for that, that's going to be better from your tax perspective. Right. It, if it slows down anything, I would basically then put the WOSB in January as well. Okay. Because you can't even operate right now. So right. you're not losing anything by, by passing that up. Um, right. So you got the office set up, you're getting your pictures done. You got the LLC paperwork done. Your the company bank account will probably be the same week as when you join uh, the women 
Small mm -hmm. Business Association. Mm -hmm. um, my PO box. Yep. Cell phone and email. Headshots, cell phone, and email, and bank account are the last things I have to do. Okay. Okay. You will get an EXP Realty email when you join. Mm -hmm. I would still go ahead and get a Gmail account going. Also? Yeah, I, I personally like using my Gmail just because if you ever decide to switch companies, you don't have to like try and change everything in the world. So that was going to be my other question today is if at some point someone wants to leave EXP or any brokerage, yeah. are you allowed to take your CRM with you? Well, that can depend. Uh, the CRM, that, that's actually a really complicated question. It's kind of a good one. So the CRM is yours. However, there is, for us, we use KV Core. So right. at KV Core, a lot of different realty brokerages are using it now. So if the broker you're going to go to has KV Core, you just have to get it switched over and your data will follow with it. At some brokerages, they have uh, their own private one, like Keller Williams has something called, I think it's Command Center. So that actually is owned by Keller Williams. Now, Keller Williams mentality should be, you know, your leads and you just have to export it out and import it to another database. In theory, they actually own that data, but these big corporations aren't going to be trying to steal an individual agent's contact information and get a terrible reputation. Mm -hmm. But to, to answer that question, if you switch companies, you can either try and get that same database in a different place, or you just do a bunch of exports and import it into the new system you choose. Okay. Let's see what else. Um, the preparing for the exam, I agree hundred percent on it. Sounds like you're getting closer to that. Yeah, I hope so. I hope to hear from her. The PO box ha you have done or you have not done yet. I have done that already. Okay. Okay. Let last week i part probably and it's up to you but even your cell phone and e email is easy to set up and it's free yeah, i i didn't know if i should just have the exp one or if i should do my own it, it's up to you i like doing my own but you're going to use your exp re realty one when you log into the system mm -hmm. the cell phone i may wait until january just for the expense aspect right so um Let's see what else. I want to have an 803 area code. That's I think why that's I, important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying um, to forget what we should focus on this week. I think it would probably be because you did a good job. If you get the headshots, you prepare for your exam. Yeah. This week I, on the YouTube videos. So let's still do the three hours. Let's turn two hours into taking action and one hour on YouTube now instead of half and half. Okay. Um, I would start off the YouTube aspect. When I studied for my broker exam, I actually found a website that was really good at preparation. So go to YouTube and, you know, because there's the national and the state portion. It may not help you as much on the state, but go ahead and try and look up, um, you know, real estate national exam, you know. I don't know, tutorial, study guide, study guide would be a good one. And so, I don't remember the company name, but there it was really good. So I like that one a lot because they actually did the practice questions as well. So is the exam that I'm waiting to take the national portion also? I thought it was just the state. It should be both. When, when, I, when I took it, you sit down and you do two sections. Yeah. That's if how it can, if, if there's any way to take the national one now, I would go ahead and do that and then schedule the state later if that's their delay. Right. Because well, you I, have to pass both. And then you only have to study for the state portions after yeah. the fact. Right. So, because that's even what I'd strongly recommend. Even if you're not ready, just go take both. And if you mm -hmm. pass one and fail the other, you have less to study for and you're right. moving forward. Right, right, right. And no one knows if you pass or fail. I know. No one even cares. You know, at the end of the day, once you get them passed, you know, I know. you have your license. So. 
It was funny because uh, when I took it, I passed the national one like easily. The state one I failed the first time and it pissed me off because I even knew the answers, Le meaning I knew the concepts. I even knew what chapter it was in, but they phrase it so difficult it's like trick questions and the state, a lot of people think they do it to basically generate a little more income as far as trying to make the, t the questions very tricky. So don't focus as much on that. Just take it, get one knocked out. And then, you know, because the second time I went there, I was so well prepared on South Carolina state law. And even that one, I missed a few. And I like was mad because I was sitting there saying I can visualize the sentence in the book. And that sentence doesn't even answer this question. You know, it was like, it was all, you know, did I know the information? Yes. Did I understand the way they're phrasing it? No. And you have no one right. to ask. So, right. Okay. So, yeah. So, anyways, YouTube to help prepare for your exam. Keep pushing to take your exam. Knock out the headshots. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get your email. I think I lost you. Oh, and okay. then... Just keep monitoring your schedule. How, how did you do on your three week time blocking? Um, so, well, this week has been much better since the kids were back in school and, you know. That was not. unfair for me to make that your task during Thanksgiving. No, it, I mean, listen, there's gonna be, it was yeah. good though. It was good for me to see a real, a real life thing. Yeah. And I, said, I even said to friends like, after school, I take the kids to the park. And I even said to friends, like, how do people who have job, full-time jobs, mother and father, husband and wife have full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. And when their kids are not in school on holidays or school closures or whatever, how, what do they do? Yep. It's really, it was really difficult, but it was a really good exercise in seeing what could or will happen. Yep, exactly. So uh, it would focus on that time blocking again and just see how you do. See what takes you off track and yeah. see what part's easy, what part's tough. Um, yeah. yeah you're, you're moving ahead good. So I like um, going back to the meetings and when we should have them. I like having meetings at the end of the week because we talked about just like brain dumping and okay. having just like, just like unloading. So. Mm -hmm. Do you consider Thursday long enough at near the end of the week? Yeah. Okay. Because I, the, the tough thing for me is always like, I love Fridays because it's almost like you get the full weekend. However, the whole weekend's starting. So that's really still almost half your week. Right. Um, but I also know myself, Fridays tend to be the days I get out of town. And, and so yeah. I hate scheduling on Fridays. <laughs> so. Yeah, no. Thursdays, Thursdays, I'm always in town for the most part. So Thursdays at nine, we'll make that our typical time frame. Yeah, Thursday's good. Okay, very good. Um, and I think that that's it. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's all I wanted to tell you. Okay. Well, you, you did things that I was going to plan for this week. So you're ahead of schedule. All right. I'm going to do those things for this coming weekend. I will let you know next week. That sounds good. I'll talk to you then. Thanks. Bye. Okay, bye.